So what I like about this local act is that um, federal agencies' policies directly counter to the advice and input would be corrected in this of local officials. Uh, this, uh, the proposal to keep staff in place for a longer periods would help develop important relationships so they actually would have a knowledge of the people and a relationship, knowledge of the area, and which would be much more effective instead of the revolving do door of staff you have with, uh, uh, in, a, in a local area. Um, but in, even then, and it's a very great frustration to me and many of my colleagues here that federal agencies continue to attempt to acquire additional land, spreading these m limited resources out even more thinly. What I'd be interested in is how about we have more land swaps where we have uh, other private parties that own land in a checkerboard pattern, um, areas that might be deemed valuable for conservation to uh, federal agencies and swap those for areas that could be managed so that we don't have this inventory of timber. The uh, local act requires one third of land acquired through the LWCF to be used for recreation purposes, a high frustration in my area and a lot of the West where the, the gates are closed to so much local activity. So, but in regards to the, um, the local input, in my own Butte County, for example, our Board of Supervisors recently urged the Forest Service to address roads that were not properly maintained and warned that winter conditions could damage the roads. The Forest Service ignored these warnings, allowed these roads to be heavily damaged, cutting off public access at the same time to a popular area. The cost of repairing these roads was far higher than the maintenance would have been. A clear example of a federal agency ignoring the very valid concerns of the communities they're supposed to be serving. So for, for Chief uh, Weldon, why are the federal agencies not more responsive to local communities, local elected officials that have this firsthand knowledge and can tell you how they would be successfully managed? Thank you for your question. And I, I would just say that, um, you know, the, the the ability for us to communicate and coordinate well with the counties, I think, is well established. We feel that every one of our line officers has, as a basic foundational obligation, to be in close relationships. I know our, our uh, many of our roads um, departments coordinate regularly and have agreements on maintenance, um, maintenance schedules. But I, I will just say, at times, it is quite difficult for us to be able to use the funding that we have to cover the extent of needs and uses. We usually have to prioritize how we apply those. But we do have funding that intent to coordinate closely. was directed towards the local advice. If you're listening, they, they tell me that your agency does not listen. BLM, in a lot of cases, does not listen. I, I just mentioned to you the Butte County access to uh, Sly Creek Reservoir and, and how the, uh, the roads would be maintained. Or we have in the Shasta Trinity Forest hazardous trees, which resulted in hundreds of thousands of acres of burning. Uh, hazardous trees identified in Lassen County and then the advice locals would have had on how to help manage that ahead of time. Uh, the uh, issue in Plumas National Forest, the list goes on and on. Your agency doesn't listen, even with the funding you would have. Uh, what I just mentioned, staff staying around longer, being more focused on listening to the locals and taking their advice instead of moving on in two years. Please address that. Well, I, I would just affirm with you that the, the need to coordinate closely is extremely important, and we have that obligation to make sure we're working closely with counties and hearing that local input. But see, we're here today having to pass a law to put you in the place of being required to do it. That, that The record does not uh, show that. Uh, for Supervisor Brennan, um, I, I totally get your frustration as well. Could we put that third slide back up, please? Uh, on the, uh, the, the narrow area that's left that you could actually manage and the difficulty with uh, the mitigation and such. Um, the, uh, the ability to actually do any work and have it be uh, done by private parties uh, fiscally viably, is, is there really any realistic uh, way to do that if you could get through the permit process? In, in and what, in what green is left there? Is there any manageable or worthwhile timber? So not on that green, but um, our forest plan, again, it was last done in 2001, and we're going, we hope we'll be going through the process of updating that forest plan. And we do see that as an opportunity, if there is improved coordination, to really look at um, what some of this is done with supposed, um, we think, um, 
and it's not science, so we can't call it science, but um, I wasn't able to um, go over in my testimony the number of alpacs and um, great gray alpacs that actually were part of this designation that burned up in the fire. And it represented close to 25%, um, but the current science or the current management strategy um, suggests that there is no process in place to remove a pack. We can't do the surveys to determine if there's occupancy or not. Through coordination and a dialogue, we would like to really um, be looking at um, how do we get them this process in place where you actually will go out and do the survey work. Uh, uh, and thank you.